Alright, uh, this is Generation Next, issue 48, the second issue in this Jason Fabrage run with art by Tez Dodders. And this is really good. I'm doing this review because I did the first issue a few months ago and I want to push this run. It's a really good run that never gets any recognition. This issue is another downtime one, but... It is folded around a sparring match between Mu and Julie Lee. And speaking of folding around, we have got one of them fold out adverts. But the recap page is on the inverse, and I love these, I really do. I think these were like the best thing Marvel ever did. These fold out recap pages that fill you in on everything. We have got the book's overall idea summed up there. We have got the cast of characters. It explains their powers and some of their backstory. And then we have got the previously on bit. That sums up recent stories that have happened that have some relevance to this issue. I rate this seven thumbs up. One of their new developments is that the excellent men's school has had the danger room upgraded. And we start off with the Generation Next students training in it. And Julie Lee, she is getting sucked off by space. And the rest of the team, they have got to work together to try and save her. But then we stop the session because their teacher, Squealy, wants them to know that they have all failed the exercise. And had it been for real, they all would have died. So here is our team, the student body. We have got Foreskin, Julie Lee, Decibel, Pink Haired Girl, who I didn't know anything about and who isn't even listed on the cast of characters at the start. I think I pointed out last issue, she is written out quite quickly in this run. And the result is, I really didn't know anything about her. We have got Singe and we have got Murr. But the MVP in this book, the most valuable player, is Emma Frosties. Emma Frosties is not just the perfect character, she is the most perfect woman ever, and my art really does flutter whenever I read comics with her in them. Our story here is Emma has lost some capital. That is Wolf of Wall Street business talk for money. And now she is worried about her ability to continue financing the school. Especially since the school's founder and main benefactor, Dr. X, he has been embroiled in many legal problems ever since he went evil in the awful Onslaught Man crossover. Emma Frosties, she's fucking beautiful, isn't she? I love her, I really, really do. But our main focus in this issue is the relationship between Julie Lee and Murr. They have got a little rivalry. A lot of this run is about these interpersonal relationships between the team and a lot of teen drama. And I think that is fine. Definitely an appropriate approach to the book. The excellent men at their core, they have always been soap opera. But they grew out of the whole teen drama thing after the Silver Age. And in the 90s, teen drama, it had evolved a lot. Here we have got some more of that teen drama I just mentioned. Decibel and Osh, they are like the Ross and Rachel from F-R-I-E-N-D-S. They are the love parent. Osh, she is Cannonball's little sister. She is returning to the school after she thought she would have to leave forever. And when she left, Decibel told her that he loved her. And now Decibel feels awkward because she came back like a week later. And then to try and resolve the problem with the funding, Emma Frosties and Squeely, they discuss the possibility of Emma using her powers to try and fox some rich investor in a sink of money into the school. Obviously, Squeely isn't keen on this idea and they debate it for a bit. And then Emma Frosties decides 
instead to try and be a better person than that and set a good example for the students by not abusing her powers. And instead, she has to do something that she is deeply ashamed of, and that is asking her sister for money. And then we have got, this is our big action set piece, if it can be called that. Mert and Julie Lee working out in their danger room and having a go at each other non-stop. And it's written well, and Mert, Mert is a really good character, very complex and straight away the one you tend to think is interesting. And she seems to hate Julie Lee for no particular reason, much to Julie Lee's annoyance. Some more stuff with Decibel and Osh and their romance and we get a little bit of backstory to explain Emma Frosty's having a sister. She has got two sisters. She has got an ugly one who has appeared before and she has got a sexy one who hasn't appeared before. And she's going to ask the sexy one for some money. And uh, Buffka Hustletine, if you were watching, you might be thinking this team is lacking something important to make it a truly great, excellent men series. And you might be thinking by this point, this is boring. These characters, other than Emma Frosty's, who is obviously the best thing ever, these characters, these teenagers, they're boring and a load of nothing. But seriously, hang around. You're going to love it by the end. Uh, and the pink-haired girl, I don't know her name. I, I don't know her powers. And the one thing I know is that she likes bare-naked ladies enough to wear one of their shirts. And on that revelation alone, I didn't want to know any more about her. There is some really funny and witty bits in this book. I laughed at least twice. The characters are written really well. But over here, we have got the letters. The letters column. And I think Buffka Hustle Time... He wrote at least two of these under pseudonyms. This one, it only really wants to ask a question, and that is, I would like to know if Maggot will be joining the team. Then this one, our here, is only interested in one thing too. What is the word on Maggot getting in at the excellent men's school for dirty muties? And then down here, next issue, the teaser, it says, After Julie Lee, is there room in Generation Next for another ex-excellent man? Maybe if the excellent man is Maggot. And if that wasn't enough, mate, right at the end, Maggot, he shows up to enrol in the school because you demanded it. Specifically you, Buffka Hustle Time. You, you demanded it. Maggot. So it stands to reason that Buffka Hustle Time rates this issue seven thumbs up without a doubt. But what do I rate it? I really enjoyed reading it. Nothing prepares you for this. I cheered. I shouted. I fist pumped the air. I cried. I stood and cheered. It's absolutely everything you hoped it was going to be. And I am so proud Maggot was in it. And I can't wait for you to see it. Seven thumbs up. I've already done that Richard E. Grant thing.